Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. If the phone falls, it's just precariously balanced up there. I dropped the tripod and broke it. So the pieces hold the phone on at the top. It's just balanced up there with a the rubber band, and the rubber band is broken. So this is called uh, Afro American Ingenuity. I don't know what you want to call it. There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's always more than one solution for a problem. I've got a problem, and I've got to get a decent tripod one of these days. Anyway. So I'm reading The Enchanted Hour. I started on it last night. I didn't, I didn't get it uploaded, so I'll try to upload it today. The Enchanted Hour is for everyone who loves books, stories, art, and language. It is for everyone who wants to give babies and toddlers the best possible start in life, and everyone who cares about the tender-hearted middle schooler and the vulnerable, inquisitive teenager, and for everyone who has yearned for an encounter with literature that breaks through what Virginia Woolf called the cotton wool of daily life. It is for people who have never tried... I don't know why she picked ben, Virginia Woolf. That's a, an author from many, many, many years ago. I think. Who cried Virginia Woolf? Who cried Woolf? Something like that. It is for anyone. It is for people who have never tried reading out loud. It is for people who have read aloud for years. Most of all, perhaps, this book is for everyone who has left the, felt the dulling of emotional connection and the muddying of once clear ideas and priorities in an era of noisy ephemera, technological enthrallment, and overbearing news cycle. Ephemera is like passing fads, like you know, the Oscar Mayer Wiener, you know, a rapper one time sold for, on eBay for $5,000 because somebody was interested in it. You know, this passing fad, it was just trash. Somebody pulled it out of the trash and kept it and sold it, sold it on eBay for $5,000. That's ephemera. Card, baseball cards, collecting cards, um, the Pokemon cards. You know, they're, they're passing fad, hopefully. Those are perhaps passing fad. Anyway, in these pages you will find enthrallment of a simpler kind. At its heart is a modest act of one person reading to another. It might be a teacher reading to a class, a mother reading to her children, a husband reading to his wife, or even a volunteer reading to a rescue dog or cat. In the chapters that follow, I will lay them out. We'll explore how sharing book books enhances child development and why picture books are better than any tech or toy in giving young children what they need to flourish. We'll go back in time. We'll go back in time to an epic when all reading was performed aloud to gain a sense of the historical intertwining of voice and writing. We'll talk about audiobooks and podcasts. Then we'll explore the stupendous power of the spoken syllable to impart language, grammar, and syntax and the ways that it can set the listener free from the confines of space and time. The reading voice has been a quiet source of entertainment by a thousand crackling fires and a bridge between generations. In a very real way, it has offer, offered a ladder out of ignorance and an escape route from suffering and bondage, and it still does. It also helps listeners discover, to discover what moves them, awakens an awareness of art and beauty, and it equips young people to fill their, fulfill their potential as open-hearted, curious, cultured adults. My hope is that you'll find the arguments, anecdotes, and research so exciting that you'll want so exciting that you'll want to rush off to read aloud to the ones you love the most. If that happens, I will have done my part in a great cultural relay race that began for me as it does for many of us when I was too young to know what was happening. Was I three? Was I four? At the very edge of memory, I can hear my mother reading Stan and Jan's Berenstein. Berenstein. Uh, the Big Honey Hunt, and Dr. Seuss's Green Eggs and Ham. My grandmother's voice is in there, too, reading the story about Ping by Marjorie Flack. The adults in my life stopped reading to me once I was able to read on my own, which is often what happens, and is a cause for regret, as we shall see. And then I grew up and the subject went away. I didn't give a thought to reading aloud one way or another for decades, although the idea of it, the beauty and importance of it, had evidently lodged itself in my, lodged itself in my subconsciousness. That slumbering idea woke up suddenly one evening when my then fiancé and I went to a dinner party at the house of our friends Louis, Lisa and Kirk, who had a parcel of small boys. During cocktails, as everyone was chatting, Lisa excused herself and disappeared upstairs. She was gone so long that eventually someone asked Kurt if there was something amiss. Oh no, he said, she's just reading to the boys. She's just reading to the boys. Oh my gosh. Any chagrin we might have felt of being stranded by our hostess was replaced for me by the stunned Admiration and a vow to do the same for my own children should I, if I had ever had any. If I ever had any. I put reading aloud for them first, too. So it was 24 years ago that when my husband and I arrived home from the hospital with our first baby. 
one single bright idea stood out that might be bewildered postpartum mine it's like a neon sign in the fog I must read to this baby that is so powerful and so moving The moment the front door of our apartment clicked shut behind us, I carried the infant to a rocking chair and picked up a book of fairy tales. It was all very new, very strange, and very disorienting. I propped the book open and began to read. Once upon a time, I told the baby Molly, there lived a widower who had one daughter. For his second wife, he chose a widow who had two daughters. All very jealous, all had very jealous natures, which was unfortunate for the gentleman's daughter, because they made her stay at home and do all the hard work. Well, they put on their finest dresses and went to garden parties. Cinderella. Hot summer sun was slanting through the window. My voice sounded false and stagey in my ears. The baby did not seem to be aware of what was happening. The prince was dancing a minuet with the elder of the stepsisters when suddenly the music stopped, and was she even listening? Were they supposed to show her the pictures? Wait, was she asleep? With a sudden sense of personal failure sharpened by exhaustion and the realization that the whole spectacle was absurd, what kind of maniac reads Cinderella? <laughs> what kind of maniac reads Cinderella to a newborn infant? I felt my throat tighten and my tears rushed to my eyes. It was a messy, inauspicious start to what would become our most beloved family ritual. The enchanted hour springs from those early tremulous days and the years that followed as Molly was joined by a brother Paris and then three sisters Violet, Phoebe and Flora. I tried to read to them for an hour or so every night, and I'm still reading today. In the wild time of their extreme youth, settling in after a long turbulent day for our evening retreat with books, it felt like reaching a life raft. Gratitude and relief would wash over me. We'd made it. Now we could relax. Now is the great part. Was the time always enchanted? Certainly not. Reading aloud is often a sacrifice and sometimes a nuisance. There were nights when I felt half frantic with wanting to get everyone settled, and nights when the books we chose didn't satisfy any of us. Sometimes I squinted at the page through eyes smarting with, smarting with fatigue. I read through head colds and sore throats and once stupidly right after oral surgery and popped a stitch halfway through. How, halfway through how the rhinoceros got his skin. <laughs> There were times I couldn't bear to pronounce every florid description in shortened paragraphs on the fly. Sorry, Brian Jacques, who the author was. There were books that so moved me that I cried and made my listeners cry, too, because their, their mother was crying. Shortly before Flora arrived in the fall of 2005, I became the children's book critic for the Wall Street Journal. Overnight, our house was flooded with new children's books. Fresh titles entered our reading rotation alongside classics and old favorites. For years, I was knee-deep in children's books hip deep in children and up to my neck in the parenting world. Then came the first bittersweet departure. In early adolescence, Molly left our enchanted reading circle. A few, hours a few years later, Paris did, too. Phoebe jumped the line and went third. It was Violet's decision to, grow, to go a few years ago, at 15, that spurred me to write this book. As I was finishing it, I could see the first tentative signs in Flora that she was readying herself to move on. <clears throat> I'm still knee-deep in children's books, too. But soon I won't be reading them out loud. Yet that sound you hear is not a suppressed sob of misery or wistfulness. It's the thwack of the baton as I pass it on to you. Family life can be a hectic and flailing business. Sometimes it's a struggle to keep everyone afloat, let alone to haul them onto a read-aloud read raft at bedtime. Yet it's an effort worth making, especially now that almost everyone's raft is tossing in a wide and often lonely sea of pixels. Young and old, we need what we're reading. What reading aloud has to offer. If it, if I were Glinda, the good witch from the wi wonder, wonderful Wizard of Oz, I'd wave my wand and bestow the gift on every household, but everywhere, since I am only myself and wandless, I hope this book will cast a persuasive spell instead. So that is the introduction. There you go. I'll try to get these uploaded immediately. Well, soon today, before the day's over, I'll get about there are about four videos. I have them done. All right. This is Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this, you are in the remnant. Again, I'm reading from The Enchanted Hour by Megan Fox Gurdon. Megan Cox Gurdon. Get the book. Very worth reading. Um, interviews on the, on YouTube with her by different podcast, talk show hosts or whatever. And um, 
just amazing concept. And I, I know that one of my daughters, Susie, thank me in a Father's Day card. Thank you for reading to us when we were children. So, one of my children remembered. <laughs> anyway, that's really cool. All right. And I have a connection with her that I don't have with the other children. So, I don't know. Maybe if she had a certain time, maybe she appreciated it. I don't know. But She and I together read all of the Louis L'Amour books that we had. Probably every Louis L'Amour book there was. We, we both read them both. So, that was pretty cool. And that connection there. Very cool. All right. God bless. Love you. Jerry Diamond, if you're listening to this, you are the remnant. Wake up. Extract cranium from. Do that auto extraction. DIY operation. Extract cranium from rectal defilade. Pull your head out of your ass. Get out of the cities. Get out of the cities. Get out of the cities. Get off the coast. Get off the coast. Get off the east coast. Get off the west coast. Get out of the cities. Get out of the cities. Get out of the cities. Survive. Drive now or walk later. Okay? Drive now or walk later. Yes, I'm talking to you. Do it now. Don't wait. Don't hesitate.